So let's start with the recap of part one in this Crew AI series, in which we gave an overview of Crew, such as creating and editing a Crew. And we also saw what agents are, and we also saw how to create those agents. And we also learned about tasks. And for doing all of this, we had to use certain decorators like agent, task, Crew base, and Crew. And eventually we ended up developing a Crew with three agents, which are the uh, senior software engineer, QA engineer and chief QA engineer and the tasks were to write Python code, review the code and evaluate the code. In this video, let's move on to the idea of flow. Flow is what streamlines the creation and management of AI workflow. For example, let's say you have a project that involves two crew and you want them to communicate with each other. And on top of that, you have certain tasks and you may have certain tools and you want all of this to be put together or you want them to communicate with each other in order to achieve the common goal that you want to achieve in your project. And that is where flow comes into play. To give a specific example, let's develop a meeting assistant in this video. So the meeting assistant will be using a crew, which is a meeting analyzer, and it will be sending messages to an app like Trello. And on top of that, it will also be sending messages to Slack. And the meeting analyzer crew also sends messages to Slack, and it receives inputs from a task like a loading meeting script, which is nothing but the transcript of the meeting or the output of the meeting in text format. So we will implement end to end this project and see how we can use flow to ease our life. Let's get started. So these are the features or possibilities with flow. First is to simplify workflow creation. Flow enables us to create the workflow very easily. For example, we can chain together multiple crews and tasks to create complex AI workflows. And there is also state management. We can think of state management as global variables. So within flow, you can have some states which are shared across different crews or across different tasks that are involved in the flow. And also it's an event driven architecture, meaning that if a certain event happens, then the flow goes from one stage to another and it's quite a flexible control as well for example we can have conditional logic as we will see later on in the video we can completely control or condition the flow from one stage to another so let's look at simple code examples to understand how we can leverage all of these features let's start with simplified workflow creation and look at how we can create a simple workflow using flow so this is a simple example workflow we need the flow class from crew ai.flow.flow. We have to inherit from this flow class in order to create any flow. And then we need the listen decorator and we need the start decorator in order to start any flow. Let's see an example where we have an example flow class which is inheriting from the flow. And we have the start method which is annotated with the start. And we have the listen method which is annotated with listen. So what's going on here? here is that we are starting the flow from generate city and this is the first function that will be invoked whenever we run this flow and once this start is complete the flow will be handed over to whatever is listening to this in this case generate fun fact is listening to the generate city so once generate city is complete the flow will move on to this function which is listening to generate city and generate fun fact will be executed and that's how the flow continues based on how you have annotated with start and listen and in order to kick start the flow similar to how we kick start a crew all we have to do is create an object of the flow and then we have to say flow dot kickoff and we will kick off the flow and we'll get the result in the variable that we are getting at the output and we can do whatever we want with that variable we can print it or we can serialize and then send it through an API. It's just endless. So the next feature is state management. Let's have a look at how we can manage the state within flow. So for the state management, we need Pydantic. We need to create a class that inherits from the base model and whatever the variables that we need in the state needs to be declared there. And once we have that, whenever we create a class which inherits from flow or rather when, whenever we create a flow, we actually have to pass the state class inside the flow so that the flow knows now that all the state is inside this class. For example, the counter and message 
are the two state variables and as usual we use the start decorator to start the flow and we use the listen decorator to listen to any other methods that we want to listen to and as with the previous example we kick off the flow and we are all set for the state variable to be shared across the different methods that are involved in the flow in this example the first method and the second method they have access to the state variables message and the counter it's as simple as that the third feature is event driven architecture we started looking into event driven architecture when we actually started looking at simple workflow we can go pretty advanced and do quite a few stuff under event driven architecture and the last bit is the flexible control flow uh, let's have a look at some conditional logic and loops and branching in order to understand how the flexible control works in flow now so far we have looked into flow where we have a task or a tool one that is executing and that leads to flowing to tool two or task two or crew two completion of task two leads to task three or it could be crew three and the flow has been sequential but what if we want the completion of either the first one or the second one to lead to the execution of the third one and this is where the conditional logic comes into play or even if you want the first one and the second one to be completed leading to the execution of the third one and again this is where the conditional logic comes into play let's look at how we can implement that in the flow so using conditional logic cannot get simpler than this basically whenever we import the flow listen and start we also have to import the conditional logic in this case r so we We'll have to import or underscore and then whenever we do the listen inside the listen we have to do, do r and then we have to give the methods to which we want the r logic to be implemented so in this case the r is going to be that of start and the second one so this logger will execute whenever either the start method finishes or the second method finishes similarly we can do for and and we can say that we want this method log to be executed when the start method and the second method execute so the completion of these two lead to the execution of the logger and as always we have to create an object of the flow and then we have to say flow.kickoff in order to run the flow so with that overview of the different features that are available with flow it's now time to get our hands dirty and do some hands-on so one of the problems with companies is meetings basically so can we have a meeting assistant on automated so let's look at the problem statement the problem is that you know we have meetings recorded and stored as transcripts in companies and extracting action items like say tasks are pretty mundane and it's a manual task on top of that these tasks need to be converted into trello tickets that needs to be added to a few people who are actually going to work on those tasks on top of that we also have to send messages to people on slack about their task and at times we may even have to save the task as a csv file as and when needed so this is a typical manual problem so can we address this using ai agents and can we do, do that using crew ai flow so the answer is that we can design a crew ai flow something like this to address that problem we have the transcript saved as text file and that can be loaded into the project using a load transcript tool this is going to be a simple python function to load txt file and that in turn is going to feed into a main crew which consists of agents work as a meeting assistants and they are going to generate the tasks at output and the list of tasks or the tasks are going to be then fed into the Trello which could be an API that creates tasks in Trello and it could also be fed into a tool that saves as a CSV file and into a Slack API that's going to send messages to the team members. Let's go ahead and implement this flow and see how it goes. So let's start with the implementation. Now I've activated the same virtual environment that we created for the first part of the video which is the crew ai let's use the same virtual environment now i'm going to say crew ai create flow meeting assistant 
and it's going to create the flow for us which will be the template of the different files needed say like we can see it's created the flow with the name meeting assistant and it says meeting assistant created successfully so, so let's go into meeting assistant and see what's inside that we can see that there's a tomo file there's a src and if we look at src we can see that again there's meeting assistant so what we'll do is we'll open this folder in vs code and set up that project to do further development so i have open the project in vs code first let's sort out the environment i'm going to do command shift p and i'm going to select the interpreter i'm going to choose crew ai and the interpreter is selected we can see now it identifies by pydantic and all of those which it was showing us warning so this is the project structure we've got on the left this src under that we've got meeting assistant and like i said before flow can have multiple crews so there's a crews folder and inside that, this uh, the default crew, which is the poem crew, we're going to delete that because we don't need that for meeting assistant. And then there's config for that, which is the agents and tasks. This is pretty much the crew that we saw in the first part of the video. And then we've got tools under that. We've got custom tools. If needed, we can edit this and then modify it. And then we've got the main, which is the uh, important bit. So this is where the uh, there is the uh, start and then there's listen and then there's kickoff and then there's plot. So we are going to edit this main file in order to implement our meeting assistant. So at the heart of the flow is the meeting assistant crew. So we're going to create that crew now. So if I right click and create a new folder, we're going to say meeting assistant crew. And inside that we're going to have the configs obviously. So I'm going to create a new folder again, which is the config. So inside the config, obviously we'll be having the agents and the the tasks so we're going to create a new file we're going to call agents.yaml and task.yaml i think we are pretty much have the main structure that we want for the meeting assistant so inside the crews we now have the meeting assistant crew and then inside that we have the missing meeting assistant crew.py i'll walk you through the content of it in a minute and under the config obviously we need the agents.yaml and task.yaml so let's look at the agents that are going to work for us so the agent is called the meeting analyzer and we're going to use just one agent the role of that is meeting transcript analysis agent and the goal is to analyze the provided meeting transcript and extract important actionable task or issues and the goal is to break down the meeting content into well-structured detailed issues that can be easily understood and uploaded to trello and here's the meeting transcript for your reference and we provide the transcript we use the uh, same curly braces in order to insert the transcript there and the backstory obviously we need to tell a backstory for the agent which is that you are an expert in analyzing meeting transcripts and summarizing the discussions into actionable tasks so that's the agent definition we then go on to create the task.yaml inside the task.yaml we obviously mention the task which is to analyze the meeting and we give a description we give the expected output which is a json list of issues with titles and bodies containing clear instructions steps to reproduce an acceptance criteria where applicable and we say this task applies to the agent meeting analyzer which is the agent that we previously defined here so with those definitions we now move on to meeting assistant crew.py so inside the meeting assistant crew.py it's pretty much the same as how we define a crew in the uh, in the first video so we import the agents and the task.yaml and we define in the LLM it's going to be a uh, open llama model instead of the open AI model and we define a meeting analyzer function and then annotate it with the uh, agent decorator similarly we write a uh, analyze meeting function and decorate it with the task decorator for the agent obviously we need to pull the meeting analyzer from the terminal file and we need to pass the llm which is the uh, which is the olama model for the task we need to pass the output format which is going to be the meeting task list and this meeting task list is something that we have defined separately uh, in a separate types because it's pydantic we have defined it as a pydantic one let's go through that we have meeting task which has a name and a description and it's obviously uh, it's inherited from a base model uh, because it's pydantic and also using the meeting task we create a list and we define that class as meeting task list 
and this meeting task list is going to be returned by the task analyze meeting so all that we are saying now here is that the analyze meeting is going to output a list of tasks which are defined in this format so that wraps up the crew but then we need to go back to flow and then define the flow that uses this crew for that we need to go to main.py and by default it comes with these content which is you know the poem state poem flow and all that so this is default because we use the command prompt to create this but we don't want this class we don't want the uh, poem state so i'm going to remove that we don't want the poem flow either so i'm going to remove that but we're going to keep the kickoff plot and the main and again we need to rename this whatever the class that we create so i'm going to go ahead and create the actual flow class that we need which is the core of what we are trying to explain in this video so if we quickly refer back to what we are trying to implement we need to implement a load transcript tool and from there we need to implement the crew which we have just implemented but in the flow we need to incorporate the crew and from the crew the flow goes to trello and csv file saving and also messaging on slack so this is the main flow that we need to implement let's go ahead now and edit the main file in the flow so let's start with the flow the main class for the flow is meeting flow and inside that it inherits from flow and obviously it is taking the meeting state class in order to track the state so inside meeting state we've got the transcript and the task so the transcript is going to be the meeting transcript that we read from the txt file we're going to populate that and then the task is going to be the list of tasks that is going to be the output of the flow and we are starting from loading the meeting notes so we have annotated that function with at start and in that we are saying that we are loading meeting notes and we are opening the txt file and we are reading it into the transcript which is the state variable we can see that this transcript gets populated here so the next step of the load meeting notes is to generate task from meeting transcript so we have loaded and populated the transcript here and now we need to use this transcript and we need to generate the task and this is going to be done by the meeting assistant crew and this crew is going to kick off with this input that we just read which is the state dot transcript and we're going to run it and get the output and in the output we're going to pull the task and the task that we get is going to be the list of tasks that are created from the transcript so this is the main part of the uh, llm or this is the main crew that is going to run in the flow once this runs fine we can see that there are three functions that listen to this so if i just highlight this we can see that our task to trello is listening to generate task from meeting transcript and save new task to csv is also listening to generate task from meeting transcript and send slack notification is also listening to generate task from meeting transcript so these are the three other tasks if you like that will be executed in the flow after the generate task from meeting transcript is run so that's how we implement the flow all that we have to do is annotate with at listen and then we need to pass the function that we are listening to so for these two tasks of like sending slack notification and adding tasks to trello we are invoking these utilities and these utilities come from utils uh, which is here i have not implemented because these are just simple python api invocation tasks so i have not bothered to implement those but let's just run this now and see how it goes. Let's start the flow and find out how it goes. Moment of truth. So crew AI flow kickoff is what we need to do in order to kick off the flow. It says running the flow and it's loaded the text file, which is the meeting notes. It's going to take a while before it actually runs all the crew and eventually comes up with the results. So let's wait a bit for it. So we can see that it has come up with the list of tasks and each and every one of the items is a meeting task and it has also saved everything into a csv file it has invoked the slack notification function and it has invoked the uh, the trello function as well so here's the csv file that it has saved if i open it we can see that it has created a few tasks and it has also given description for each of it so let me read out some of the tasks that it has listed for example integrate stripe elements form with backend api and it has said that plan for user documentation and support document api endpoints and webhook event handlers 
integrate front-end with back-end API. It all sounds good, actually. So it's done a pretty good job at converting the meeting notes into a list of uh, tasks. So with that, we are coming to the end of the flow using True AI. So I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.